Hello Stampers, this is Kelly Atchison at Stampabuff.com. I'm coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I have a treat for you today. I'm going to show you the June Paper Pumpkin Kit called One in a Melon, and then I'm going to show you some alternate projects using the products that are in the kit. This is what came this month. You get six of these little cards with envelopes, and also this adorable gift bag with this fun watermelon print tissue paper and um, die cuts and I'm going to show you what's in the kit later. I want to get to my project right away. So this is what came in the kit. Stampin' Up! gives you a little booklet that shows you what they have in mind for you to make. And it also has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. So it's pretty cool. But I'm going to show you what I made with some of the um, elements in the kit. So first of all, here is my card, and I think this is just stinking adorable. This little card is so sweet. It says down here a little something sweet, and I added some rhinestones. I also added this black decorative ribbon border, and um, this watermelon is cut out. So I'll talk about this just a little bit. Inside the kit, you get four of these little gift bags, and they're just adorable. They're all scored for you, and Stampin' Up! has even gone as far as adding adhesive strips here. So all you have to do is pull this off, tuck everything in, and glue it down. Isn't that sweet? All scored for you, so you can push the edges in like a little gift bag. And that's what I had here. So I took this gift bag, and I cut a card front, at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, and then layered a layer of basic black cardstock under that at five and a quarter by four. As I said, did this little decorative ribbon border. I tied a triple bow with the twine. We get some Melon Mambo Baker's twine in here, and I'll show you real quick how I did that. You take your um, Baker's twine and you wrap it around three times. You're going to cross it over and I call this like the cancer bow because that bow goes like this. You cross it over like this, tuck that piece under back over the top and you tie it in a single knot right here. I'll pull out my nails and I have people asking me, oh my gosh I want one of those bow jigs. Where do you get those at? Yeah, you can just make it. It's super simple. A block of wood, this is one inch apart, these two holes, and then half inch from there. So these are just plain nails. You can get them at your hardware store. Super easy. But here's my triple bow, and that's what I put on my card right here. The little rhinestones, and I stamped a little something sweet right on my watermelon paper. I put that on a lemon-lime card base. So isn't that cute? This is my alternate project. I thought it was pretty fun. The other thing that I wanted to show you, I haven't used this yet in a video, but this is that decorative ribbon border punch. And what you do is you cut your cardstock approximately the, the size that you need, the length that you need. So I cut this at a little bit more than four because I like to kind of trim mine off. And then these punches have, if you look, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but they have little lines right here. So you're going to put your cardstock in all the way up to the baseboard back here, and then you're going to slide it over until you get to that little line. And then you're going to punch. It's better to punch with this part of your hand because you have more strength here than to try to punch like this. I don't have enough strength in my thumb to do that. So I punched that and now you're going to slide it over until it matches up with this picture right here and you are going to punch it again. Making sure that you're holding it onto the baseboard so that it gets all nicely lined up. There's our next one and we need to do one more so I'm going to line that up one more time. As long as you have it lined up on the picture you get this cute little border and I put that on my card layer and I just trimmed the edge off a little bit. So isn't that pretty? I really like this punch. You're gonna see a lot more of this coming from me. And next, I made this cute little gift box to go with my card. And this is big enough to fit a little Ghirardelli chocolate in. Wouldn't this be wonderful to give to somebody that you wouldn't normally give a gift to for their birthday 
or whatever occasion, but you've got a card with a matching little gift box with a chocolate in it. it just takes, a, you know, less than a dollar and um, a little bit of effort to make this. So I'm going to show you how I made that little box. I just took a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock here. I've cut it at five and a half by three and a half. You're going to score it at a half an inch on all four sides. So I'm just going to put that into my paper trimmer. And I've got my scoring blade up here and score it on all four sides at a half an inch. Do you like my fingernails? They almost match. They're more berry burst, which is my new favorite color, but I love Melon Mambo too. Okay, so we've got all that done. Now you're going to score in the middle at two and a half and three inches. So you're just going to score the whole thing at two and a half and again at three. Now I'm going to take my paper snips and you're going to just snip in from both long sides on these score lines. And the same thing on the other side. This box like doesn't get much easier as far as boxes go. It's pretty simple. Okay, let me move this out of the way. I am going to take and fold, bring my bone folder in here and get a good crisp edge on these folds. One thing that I usually like to do is kind of notch out my tabs and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Okay, when you're cutting out these tabs on the tab piece you just cut out a little triangular sliver like that and that'll help your box go together better. It'll just line up better. It won't be crowding. Do you hear it thundering outside? Oh my gosh, we're gonna get a storm here in just a minute. I love storms. I grew up just south of Kansas City, Missouri, and we were kind of in Tornado Alley, so you would think I would be scared of them, but I just thought they were fascinating. My mom came home one day and found me sitting on the porch of our house while the tornado sirens were blaring. And it was just such a common occurrence to hear them that I didn't even think about it. It's like, oh, there they go again. Didn't even think, well, I should get in the basement. <laughs> I was pretty young then. Anyways, I have fond memories of that. So once you have all of your little tabs done, oh, we need to, we need to fold and burnish on these two edges, or score lines, I mean, in the middle too. So there we go. Got that done. Then I'm going to take my tabs and fold them in. And you can use fast fuse. If you have sticky strip, you can use that. Less glue is better here. It'll dry faster. My glue is coming out kind of fast here right now. And we're going to fold these up. I'm going to bend this back so you can see what I'm doing. Just going to, whoops, keeps getting away from me there. It's going to take just a second because I used more glue than I normally would. And when you use more glue, yeah, see, it's kind of oozing out there, and that's icky. Get that off of there. And we got a little oozing going on over here too, but if you use less glue, it just works nicer. And it still sticks just as good. There, now I have some tissue stuck to that one. That's great. <laughs> oh well, it's, it's handmade. We can't expect it to be perfect all the time, right? Glue these in place. Now you want to look at your box and make sure it's squared up really nice on all the corners. And mine looks like it's I did a pretty good job, regardless of how much glue I splashed all over. Yep, we're still glue still coming out. There we go. And now I'm gonna do these, and again, I'm gonna make sure they're nicely squared up. And this one. And here is our adorable, let's keep everything together here. And then close it up right away. If you can move it a little bit, see how that's kind of sticking out there? I would trim that off. Just take your paper snips and trim that off just a little bit. There, there comes Anal Kelly. I'm really weird about stuff like that. I like them to be nice. 
Okay, there's our cute little box, and that's exactly what I did here, only I used this gift bag for the paper on the box, and then in the stamp set, I tried to figure out a way to put this little banner on this little box, but it just didn't work out for me, so I took it and cut it apart, it's your day, and put a little wedge of my watermelon. So I cut my watermelon in half and put a little wedge on there and wrapped it and tied it in a bow with the baker's twine. And again, this is big enough for um, a Ghirardelli chocolate, which is just a sweet little gift for someone. Maybe somebody was getting your mail while you were on vacation. This would make a great thank you card for them. Anything like that. Just a little something that shows that extra effort. Okay, now I've got one more project for you and I'm super excited about this one. What could be better than a triangular box? A watermelon box that's triangular, right? I thought this was stinking adorable. So this has got a Velcro closure on it and then, are you ready for this? I went and got watermelon shaped sour patches. These are delicious too. They're not really sour. They're pretty sweet. I've been eating them since I bought them, brought them home from the store, which probably is not a good idea. But I put them in a Ziploc bag and that's what I'm going to put in my little triangular box. And again, this is just a sweet little gift you could give as a, you know, a thank you or brighten somebody's day. Maybe somebody's had a crummy week at work or um, give it to a teacher. This is a great thing when school starts up again to give to a teacher. So let me show you how to make this triangular box. I'm going to bring the one in a melon stamp set in. And this is from the paper pumpkin kit. Do you know this paper pumpkin kit is only $20 a month. You can subscribe to it just like a magazine. So it's a pretty cool deal. You get a stamp set every month and they are adorable. You also get a couple ink pads, either one or two little ink spots, these are called. And these are fabulous. I like to put these in a box and take them with me when I'm traveling because it doesn't take up much space. And, you know, you always leave without something. You get there and you're like, oh, I didn't bring the melon mambo. So these are great for traveling too. As is the kit. Everything comes in the kit except scissors and adhesive. So... When you go on a trip, you can sit in the car while he's driving and make your little paper pumpkins, or I like to take them to my mom's house. You can take them camping with you. It's just a lot of fun. I've got a scrap of Whisper White cardstock here, and I am going to, I'm using my big ink pads because, well, I'm at home and I have them. Same color, Melon Mambo. I am going to stamp my watermelon, and then I'm going to open up my Emerald Envy and this is the watermelon rind that goes around the outside and you're gonna line this up and stamp that around the outside oh I did pretty good ah! sometimes I really impress myself and oh pff. well I used the wrong one here I should have used the sweet one see this one says sweet so if you're gonna make this box you can use whichever one you want but I thought the sweet one was cuter for the box and then the not sweet one this one on the card, but whatever you want to do. It's your card, right? You could do whatever you want. So I'm just going to cut this out. We call this fussy cutting because, well, it's a little fussy. We don't have a die for this. Don't really need one either. That's pretty simple, right? And then I mounted it on a couple dimensionals. So I'll just throw those on there right away. And the dimensionals also come in your paper pumpkin kit. We've got the little mini dimensionals here and we have some glue dots. So everything comes in there except, like I said, your adhesive and scissors. That's all you need. Your first kit even comes with an acrylic block to use. How cool is that? And the rest of this stamp set, we have some three different greetings in here and a hooray. And like I said, the sweet watermelon, which is super cute. Okay, now that we have that ready, I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer because we need to do some scoring for the triangular box. I've got a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock here that is nine and three quarters by seven. And I'm going to put it in my paper trimmer. Open up my extension arm here. If you don't have a paper trimmer or you need a new paper trimmer, I really recommend this one. I love it. It works 
fabulously. It's probably the best paper trimmer we've had in a long time. I'm starting at one and three quarters, and I'm gonna score that, and then we're gonna go to four and a quarter, and then seven and a quarter. Now I'm going to turn this and I'm gonna score it two and five. I must have tilted this <laughs> when I cut it. So there's a lot on this piece that we need to cut off. So I'm gonna grab my big scissors. When I'm cutting a lot longer cut lines, I like to use these big scissors for that. And I am going to, you're gonna cut on this middle score line and you see this is the smaller panel up here. You're gonna cut this corner off both of these pieces. And you'll be able to see a little bit better when I get all of this done. I'm gonna take both sides off. And then you're also gonna take these two off. So we're just cutting up to that score line right there. And this one. All right, there we go. Here is the smaller panel up here. So this is what it needs to look like. And then I'm just gonna take a pencil and mark this at one and a half inches right in the middle of these two flaps on the side. So I've got a little mark right here and a little mark right here. We need to score those into a V so I'm just going to put this into my paper cutter. I've got my little pencil mark going into the channel here, and I'm gonna line up the corner of my cardstock with the channel. And we're gonna use our scoring blade and just score that, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The corner into the channel, and the pencil mark in the channel. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'll be right back. Okay, we've got this accomplished. Now we're just going to burnish these edges. You wanna make sure that this is getting all the way down to where you have this angle. That one looks great. This one's just a little bit off, so I'm just gonna force it a little bit. And that's easy to do. Burnish the rest of our score lines. Whoops. Now I'm gonna bring in my envelope punch board because I've got a corner rounder here. And you're going to round the corners on both ends. And I'll show you what I mean here. In just a second. <laughs> I just flicked that on the floor. <laughs> I'll vacuum later. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Okay, so here we've got these corners and these corners are rounded. Now, here comes the, oops, I forgot to burnish these edges right here. Don't forget to do all the score lines. All right, now a little liquid glue on this is the little littler flap we're down here on the bigger flap so we're going to pull in this little triangle put a touch of glue on it you don't need a lot remember the more glue you use the more you, you longer you have to hold on to it i'm going to fold this up and square it up with this edge just like that here we go again over here i'm going to hold that for just a second And that is our box. Now, I wanna show you a few other things. I made another box, but my um, camera shut off, which is just lovely because of course I was all finished with it when I noticed that it shut off. So, just gonna show you a couple more things that I did here. I have this Velcro, it's clear Velcro with sticky back, and I just pulled one of each off of here. I put one on here, and then I stuck the other Velcro to it and closed my box, pushed on it good, and then opened it up so that you know they're in the right place. 
these panels of the watermelon rind paper. Oh, I just noticed that one. The stripes are going the wrong way. <laughs> way to go, Kelly. Um, this paper is, this little piece is one and a half by two and three quarters. And then you're going to need two pieces here and here that are two and a quarter by two and three quarters. And one piece right here that's two and three quarters by two and three quarters square. I added that little pumpkin that I stamped with the dimensionals here. Oops, I got it crooked. And, oh, let's see if I can get it together. There we go. Then I just tied some Baker's twine around my flap here. So there you go. Let me show you a few other things in this paper pumpkin kit. We've already seen the Baker's twine. Here's the adorable watermelon paper. Isn't that cute? This is tissue paper. And that goes in our gift bag. So that's really cute. Then we've got these adhesive, die cut adhesive leaves or ferns, I guess is a good way to put it. I put those on here. Here's all of our cards. They're all scored for you. So that's nice. And then we've got these elements and these little circles right here, these are just die cut. They pop right out of here. Little circle, I put the watermelon and the greeting on here. And then we've got the mini glue dots I told you about, some mini dimensionals. These are the little lemon lime twist um, clothes pins to hold this all together. Your two ink spots. And then this banner, again, just pops right out of here, is right here. And the other one is square, and that's what's under here, mounted on dimensionals. And then we have the envelope. So six cards, four treat bags, and a whole bunch of fun. All of this fun fits in this simple little box with the stamp set. I love this stamp set. And you can see just the fun things that I made with it. I really had a great time with this kit. Now, our next kit comes out. You have to subscribe before July 10th. And when you do that, you will get the next Paper Pumpkin Kit. When you subscribe through me, don't forget I have a seven project tutorial. So seven different alternate ideas to make with the current paper pumpkin kit. So July's kit, I will take and make up alternate ideas and you'll get seven different ideas to make with that kit. So you'll have lots and lots of ideas. Hop on over to my blog, www.astampabove.com. You'll find a link on there where you can sign up for the Paper Pumpkin Kit. Also, if you're on YouTube watching this video, please check in the description of my video. You will find a link to my blog and the Paper Pumpkin website where you can order your Paper Pumpkin Kit. So subscribe to it. I love getting this little surprise in the mail every month. And please don't hesitate. If you have any questions, let me know. Pop me an email at kelly at a stamp above .com. If you'd like to order any other Stampin' Up! products, you can do that on my blog. I'd be happy to send you a catalog. Just let me know that you need one. Wishing you a wonderful, fun-filled, safe holiday weekend. Thanks so much. Thank you.